The Nicholson family of Rentham, Massachusetts are among the earliest playmakers in colonial America. Francis Nicholson was born in the 1680s and is the earliest recorded playmaker. His son, John Nicholson, and his slave, Caesar Shalor, who he freed on his death, were also playmakers of considerable skill. Justice Trout was known as the patent king of the Stanley Rule and Level Company. During his nearly 40-year career with Stanley, Trout received more than 150 patents, making him the single most prolific inventor of hand tools in American history. We are very fortunate to have in this auction two models from Trout's own workshop together with their original patent papers. One of them would subsequently become the Stanley No. 72 chamfer plane. The other never actually made it into production, but is a remarkable example of Trout's inventive genius. Surveying was an important profession in early America, and American surveyors and instrument makers made a number of improvements to the techniques that had been developed in Europe. Benjamin Hanks was one of the Minutemen at Lexington and Concord and served in the Revolutionary War. He was also one of the earliest American makers of scientific instruments, and this mahogany and brass surveyor's compass, which dates to around 1800, is a beautiful example of his work. One of the most important was the invention, by William Young of Philadelphia, of the transit, a simpler and more rugged version of the English theodolite that was more suited to use on the frontier. Plow planes are used by cabinet makers to cut a narrow groove in wood, similar to the way that an agricultural plow cuts a furrow in the soil. The plow plane invented by James Silcock in 1844 is the earliest patented plow plane invented in Great Britain. This one includes a second fence used to make Philister cuts, which makes it nearly unique. The signature product of skilled British toolmakers in the late 1800s and early 1900s was the infill plane. Shown here are examples by three prolific makers. A smoothing plane by Stuart Spears, a shoulder plane by Thomas Norris and Sons, and a jointer plane by Henry Slater. Leonard Bailey's greatest legacy was his bench plane design, which revolutionized the industry and is still universally used today. Only two examples of this extremely rare plane are known to exist, both of which appear to be prototypes made by Bailey himself. Plane makers would cast corrugations or grooves into the sole to reduce the friction. Shown here are the diamond pattern sole invented by Ellis Morris, the Bailey Tool Company block plane with the company name cast into the sole, a dimple sole plane by Ohio Tool Company, and an example of the Cyrus Hardy patent with large holes cast into the sole. We have a number of Miller's patent planes in the auction, including this stunning example of the Stanley No. 42. Salesman samples were miniature models used both by traveling salesmen to demonstrate their products to retailers and customers, and by storekeepers as display models. Many of them were models of agricultural implements, such as these two plows. One is a Planet Junior one horse plow by the S.L. Allen Company of Philadelphia, which also invented the flexible flyer sled. The other is unmarked, but is very elaborate and detailed. Prior to 1880, an inventor who wished to obtain a patent in the United States was required to submit a miniature working model of his invention. Many of these models were destroyed in the Patent Office Fire of 1877. 
After the requirement was abolished, the patent office sold its remaining models to a wealthy collector who lost his fortune in the stock market crash of 1929. These two models are for a paper cutter, patented in 1871 by Edwin Coles of Cleveland, and a furnace grate, patented the same year by George Moore of Philadelphia. Henry Diston, who immigrated from England to Philadelphia in 1833, was the premier maker of saws in the United States through most of the 19th century. This keyhole saw, with two cutting edges at right angles to each other to cut a square corner, is one of the rarest. The bit brace, which was the preferred method for drilling holes before the invention of the electric drill, is one of the simplest and oldest tools known. During the inventive heyday of the late 19th century, inventors came up with countless variations on this ancient tool. 